All right, guys, welcome back to another video. And today we'll be working the June 2019 question two on the paper two paper. So what we'll be doing is start by simplify complete and have three p square multiplied by four p to the fifth power. So what we usually do is to work the numbers separately from where we work the letters or the variables. So what we have is three multiplied by four, and that will give us 12. And then we have p square multiplied by p raised to the fifth power. And this is the same as I was saying, using law indices, it will be p raised to the, it's the same as two plus five. So therefore, what when you do that, what you'll get is p raised to the seventh power. Now putting everything together, so therefore, our answer is 12p raised to the seventh power. And that is our answer for part one. Who now says 3x over 4y raised to the third power divided by 21x squared over 20y squared? So what we know is that when it comes down to fractions, we never just go ahead and, mul and divide fractions. We always change our division sign to multiplication and then flip or reciprocate the fraction that follows. So what we'll have is 3x divided by 4y raised to the third power. So what we're going to do now is to change our division sign to multiplication and then flip the fraction that follows, which is 21x squared divided by, well, when we flip it, we'll get 20y squared, sorry, and that is divided by 21x squared. And this is what it will look like. Now what we can do is when we're multiplying, we can always look at, is there anything that can be simplified before we go ahead and multiply? So in this case, there is. So what we'll do is to say, four into itself goes one time and four into 20. So four into itself goes one time and four into 20 goes five times. Three into itself goes one time and three into 21 goes seven times. So that's it for the numbers. Now when you look at the X and the Y's, we can say X into itself here one time and that X pencils with one of the X's at the bottom so we only have one x remaining and the two y's from top cancels out with two other y's from the bottom so we have one y remaining at the denominator portion so therefore when we go ahead now what we'll have is for the numbers one multiply by five to give us five there is no other letters the x was cancelled and the y was cancelled so what we have remaining at the denominator portion is one multiplied by seven and X and uh, Y. And this now will be your answer, five over seven X, Y. B now says solve the equation. So what I usually do when we find the LCM is to multiply the LCM by each term in the equation. In this case, our LCM will be both 7x minus 1 and x. So we're going to multiply 7x minus 1 and x by each term in the, by each fraction, basically. So what you're going to have is 7x minus 1 and x being multiplied by this first fraction, which is 3 over the 7x minus 1 plus 
the LCM again, which is the 7x minus 1, and the x being multiplied by the 1 divided by x. And that is equal to, again, the LCM being multiplied by this term, which is 7x minus 1 and the x being multiplied by 0. So therefore, what we'll get is for this portion, this 7x minus 1 will cancel with this 7x minus 1. So what we'll have remaining is just the x and the 3x. So 3 multiplied by 3x will, well before, we'll let me just write it back just as is the x being multiplied by the 3. Plus, in this case, this x will cancel with this x. So what we'll have remaining is the 7x minus 1 being multiplied by 1 from the numerator. And that is equal to 7x minus 1 multiplied by x multiply by 0. And basically, we know that anything that multiplies by 0 will leave us with 0. So, but before we go ahead, let me just show you all the cancelling that was done here. So, this 7x minus 1 was cancelled with this 7x minus 1. So, what we have is this 3 and this x, which is right here. For this portion, we have this x being cancelled with this x. So all we have remaining here is a 7x minus 1 multiplied by 1. And we know anything that multiplies by 0 leaves us with 0 for that portion. So now we can go ahead and say 3 multiplied by x, and that will give us 3x plus 7x minus 1 multiplied by 1 will just leave us with the plain 7x minus 1, and that is equal to 0. So now what we can do is go ahead and add. So we can add the 3x, so we're adding our common terms, the 3x and the 7x, and that will leave us with 10x minus 1 is equal to 0 and now we can solve for x so now what we have here is so this is 0 so now what we have here is 10x is equal to 1 as we're adding removing this negative 1 so we're adding 1 to both sides of the equation so therefore so this is 10x so therefore x is equal to 1 divided by 10 and that is our answer x is equal to 1 over 10. part c now says when a number x is multiplied by 2 the result is squared to give a new number y so we're just going to write this when a number x so we have a number x and it is being multiplied by 2. So the number x, so this is it right here, the number x. And then it says this number x is multiplied by 2. So what we have now is 2x, which is x being multiplied by 2. So we're writing each part of the statement as they give it. Then it says the result, which is a 2x, the result is squared to give a new number y. So therefore, what we'll have is 2x. So it says this number, the result of it is squared. So it is 2x squared, and it gives a new number y. So this is our answer. 2x squared in bracket is equal to y. And it says express y in terms of x. So that is our answer there. The 2x square is equal to y. But what we see right here is that this portion in the bracket can basically be worked out. So 2 square will give us 4. And x square, you know, will give us x square is equal to y. And that will be our final answer so express y in terms of x y is equal to 4x square 
part two now says determine the values of x that satisfy the equation y equal x and the equation derived in c1. So therefore, two expressions will be y is equal to x. This is equation one. And equation two would be what we had up top, which is y is equal to 4x square. And this will be equation two. So what we're going to do is substitute equation one into equation two. So in equation two, everywhere we see y, we will replace it with x. As it says, equation one was saying y is equal to x. Everywhere in equation two where we see y, we will replace it with x. So therefore, what we'll have is x is equal to 4x squared. We can now go ahead to solve for the values of x. So we'll have the x's on one side of the equation. So what we'll have is 0 is equal to 4x squared minus x. I'm taking the x from the left-hand side of the equation to the right hand side so it becomes a negative x so therefore zero is equal to what i'm going to do is factorize here so what is common from both um term in this right hand side is x so therefore x goes on the outside x into 4x square will leave us with 4x minus x into x goes one time so what we have is 4x minus one in the bracket so therefore, we can now solve for the values of x. So therefore, for the first one, what we'll have is 0 being equal to x or 0 is equal to 4x minus 1. So from here, we see that we already have one of the values for x, which is where x is equal to 0. So now work in the second portion which is where 0 is equal to 4x minus 1. And we're now going to remove this minus 1 to the left-hand side. So therefore, 1 is equal to 4x. So what we're doing is solving for x here. And therefore, 1 over 4 is equal to x. So remove the 4. It was multiplying on the right-hand side. So when it comes across to the left, it will be dividing. So now we have our two values for x, which is x is equal to zero, or x is equal to a quarter. So therefore, x is equal to zero, or x is equal to a quarter. So these are the two possible values for x. And that is the end of question two. So stick around and come back for question three.